So Minecraft 1.20 has just released. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can host your very own 1.20 Minecraft server. And this video is going to cover free and paid versions to do this. And the paid version at the cheapest option will only be $1 per gigabyte. So we're gonna start with how to do it for completely free. So the first thing you're gonna to want to do is go to the Minecraft launcher. Then at the top, we're gonna to go to the installations menu. As of recording this video, 1.20 isn't actually released yet, but this video will still work the complete same. Instead, we're gonna use a 1.20 pre-release. So simply find your version and click on it. Then in here where it says version, we're then gonna click server download. And this should then download a server.jar file. If the file logo doesn't look like this, then you probably don't have Java installed. So go to the first link in the description and download Java. And then the jar files logo should look like this one. Next, we're gonna go to our desktop and we're gonna create a new folder. And we're just gonna call this server. Once you've created your server folder, go ahead and drag your server.jar into that folder. So now in our server folder, we have the server.jar. If your file instead just says server and not server.jar, go to the top of the file explorer to click view and then find the file name extensions box and go ahead and click on it. And now your file should be called server.jar. Next, we're gonna right click in this folder and we're gonna create a new text document. And we're gonna call this one start.txt. Once that's created, we're gonna go inside of it and here we're gonna type Java space and then a dash a capital X M X and then the amount of RAM that you want to give your server. So each gigabyte of RAM is actually 1024 megabytes. So let's say we wanted to give four gigabytes to our server. We would simply multiply 1024 by four, which would be 4096. So just for this example, I'm gonna put 4096 and this would be four gigabytes. And you can always change this later. Then we're gonna put an M on the end then we're going to put a space, another dash, and then capital X, MS. Then we're going to put the same number we put before, which was 4096. And then once again, M, then another space, then dash jar, and then the jar file's name. So in our case, it is just server.jar. So once that is typed in, we're then going to add another space and put on no GUI. Then we're going to put a new line, and then we're going to type in pause. So once you've done this, we're then going to go file, and then save as. And the reason we're going to do save as is because we're actually going to change this document to a .bat file. So at the bottom by file name, we're going to change start.txt to start.bat. Once you've done that, go ahead and click save. And now if we go ahead and close this, and then if you want to, you can also just delete start.txt. So now if we start it, if you get this error, it means that you're not using a 64-bit version of Java. So go in the description and make sure you download the 64-bit version. If you instead get this error, it means that we instead need to install the Java runtime. So if you go to the second link in the description, you should then be taken to this page. Then scroll down until you find the version you need. So for me, this is gonna be Windows X64 installer. So then go ahead and download it. Then if we go ahead and run it, then simply just go through the installation instructions. And then it should say successfully installed, where we can then close it. And then we can try opening the bat file once again. And this time it should generate some files. If it hasn't done this, right click on the file explorer and click refresh. And the files should then show up. Then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the eula.txt. And at the bottom, you're gonna change eula from false to true. Then simply save this document. And now once again, we're gonna run our start.bat file. And now our server is actually going to start up. So you can see it's preparing the level world and it's currently generating the spawn area. And then once it is complete, it should say done at the bottom. So now we can go ahead and open up Minecraft. Now while you're playing Minecraft, you're gonna to want to make sure to keep this open. As if you close this, the server is also going to shut down. So now we're in Minecraft. Now of course you want to make sure that you are in the same version that the server is in. So for me, this is Minecraft 1.20, pre-release too. But of course for you, this should just be Minecraft 1.20. We're then gonna to go to multiplayer and then we're gonna click add server. Then of course, name this whatever you want. And then for the server address, we're simply gonna put local host. Then we'll put done. And as you can see, the server is now working and we can go ahead and join it. So one big thing that I definitely need to mention, if you've followed up to here, this is only going to work on people that are on the same Wi-Fi as you. So if you want people to join that are on other Wi-Fi networks, then you're going to have to port forward. It may sound complicated, but it's actually pretty easy. Now, depending on which internet service provider you're with, the port forwarding method is going to be different. So I can't show them all in this one video, but in the description and as the iCard in the top right right now, I'll leave a video which can help you with your port forwarding. So then once you've done that, you can play this server with your friends. So now one last thing I'm gonna show you is simply just how to run commands. It's pretty simple. You're simply gonna go back to your batch file and you're just gonna type the command into your batch file. So we're gonna do op, 
and then Strange Stan. And as you can see, I've made Strange Stan a server operator, and in Minecraft, I've also been made a server operator, which means that I can now do things like creative mode. So now we're going to move on to the paid method, and this will be using Pebblehost. So the third link in the description will take you to this website. And this is our budget Minecraft hosting. You can also choose from premium and extreme plans. And this will give you different specifications. Also, if you scroll down, you can pick how many gigabytes of RAM you want. On our budget plan, it will only be $1 per gigabyte of RAM. And for 1.20 SMP, I would recommend around 5 to 6 gigabytes, which already makes it a lot cheaper than Realms, and with better performance. On the right, you can then select your version, as well as the type of server you want to run. Bigot and Paper will support plugins, Vanilla won't support plugins, Bedrock will of course be for Bedrock players, and Forge mod packs will be for, of course, Forge mod packs. And if you don't see your thing listed here, it doesn't matter, as you can change this whenever you want. Also, when 1.20 does release, it will also appear on this list here. Then if you do select that, it will automatically install when you buy your server. Once you've bought your server, you'll be taken to the server panel. And you can change your server version if you scroll down to server type and click on our jar and pre-install menu. From here, you can choose from a selection of different versions, including mod packs if you have a premium plan or buy our pre-install add-on. But these top versions will be absolutely free to use. And you can simply select if you go to vanilla. Of course, 1.20 doesn't release for me yet, but it will be right here at the top. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, definitely leave a like and subscribe. And hopefully, I'll see you next time.